Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I'm honoured to stand once again and speak about Bill C-2 and, and speak about some of the implications that we're going to have when we see this bill forwarded. You know, today um, it's, it's great that we're all in this House and that we're able to, to debate this because, you know, I think there's many things that when, when we look at this bill, there are many things that Canadians need to hear and that we as the official opposition have to bring to the attention of the, of the government. Um, you know, today I want to start on the tax-free savings accounts. We know this as a tool that has been working for Canadians. Um, this current Liberal government has proposed a reduction in the maximum amount for Canadians that Canadians can invest in these accounts per year. But unfortunately, the government does not, on the false pretense that doubling the uh, tax-free savings account only benefits the highest earning Canadians rather than just the middle class. And you know, we talk about this today as we're looking at all of these proposed middle class tax hikes that we're going to be seeing for the, for the middle class and for all Canadians. When we talk about the tax-free savings account, um, and Madam Speaker, I will be splitting my time with the member from Central Okanagan, Simla Kamian Nicola, who is also in the present in the House today, and we probably know him as the Member of Parliament for Free the Bureau Campaign, another great campaign that we've done. But I'm, I'm up here to talk about the tax-free savings account and also the proposals that we're seeing uh, with our Minister of Finance moving forward <laughs> with CPP and the contributions that they're going to be inflicting on um, all Canadians, especially the future generations. You know, we talk about this uh, middle class uh, tax cut that they proposed at reducing it to 20.5 percent and it really does sound good when you're out there saying we're, t we're cutting taxes for the middle class but they're forgetting to tell them about all the other things that they're going to do. We heard it from ourselves here in the House with the Minister of the Environment talking this week about the carbon tax. We have to recognize that they're going to say they're going to be reducing taxes for the middle class to create more opportunities, to provide them better savings and more opportunities for their families, but they're not talking about all of these other things that they're also proposing. We here, and, and I actually am a resident of Ontario, where we're already going to see gas prices go up at four cents a litre because it was proposed by the Ontario Liberal government. And now we see that we have our federal Liberal government once again also proposing carbon tax and CPP tax and all of these other things. So although we talk about the middle class um, receiving a 20.5%, uh, they're going to be at a new bracket, bracket number two at 20.5, they're not letting it, all Canadians know that they're actually taxing us in other forms. And so it's really very unfortunate that they are saying one thing but doing another. You know, we're not, in, we're not decreasing the taxes when we have backdoor amendments changing the tax system that we currently have. And for those people who are living in Ontario, where we see horrible job creation and we see much unemployment, uh, unemployment just that, like that in Al Alberta, especially with the non-support that we're seeing in our energy sector, not only are Canadians not going to have jobs, but they're going to be paying more even at the gas pumps. Uh, they're going to be paying more in the grocery stores because we see governments who are putting in taxes on Canadians, whether they're in Ontario or whether they're in Canada, or all of Canada. And these are huge concerns that I have. You know, uh, let's go on to the CPP. We talk about the tax-free savings account, which is an avenue and a vehicle for Canadians to save money. We had put that up because we had people out there in Canada saying that this is a great vehicle of saving money. And by introducing a new threshold of what they could save, it gave them the opportunity. Now, many times we'll hear this, uh, this government say, well, people aren't maximizing it. And now what they're doing instead is they are nanifying what we're going to be doing in Canada by introducing Canada pension plan increases. We have a vehicle that currently works, the tax-free savings account, which allows Canadians to save responsibly. And I think many, many Canadians are doing so. But now we see a uh, Minister of Finance who will be out touring later on this month um, and trying to get all of the other provinces on board to increase our CPP contributions. Now we have to recognize that that not only is a vehicle for savings, and, and that's fine, but at the same time, it is a huge burden on those small businesses. Those small businesses that were looking forward to a decrease in their small business tax, which we have also seen that this government will not be fulfilling that promise. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the tax-free savings accounts, allowing Canadians to make the choice on how they want to save their money, and now what we're going to be doing is introducing a new tax 
for Canadians and for employers through the Canada Pension Plan, as the nanny state tax that I see it's been doing. What's this going to do? We know that when students are coming out of, of university, that they do have high debts, and it's something that we should be aware of as Canadians. We are asking our students to go out there and get it, uh, get the proper education that they need so that they can make sure that they have a brilliant future. But what we're doing is they're going to come out of those schools with, a, with debt, and now when they get their first job, not only are they going to have to contribute to the CPP, but they're going to have to double those contributions. And we're looking at an additional $3,000 out of their pockets to be putting in to the CPP. Now, as a parent, I have no problem because I believe it's very, very important for people to save uh, to, for their future. But at the same time, what we're doing is we're having them save for retirement when they can take that money and put it to things like their student debt, put that money into a tax-free savings account or to the home buyers, first-time home buyers plan under the RRSPs, and they can put that money to their first home. So what we've done now is we have taken all opportunities for Canadians, and as a government, we are saying you must put into the Canada Pension Plan. Now, although uh, I think saving for retirement is very, very important, we have to recognize that this is a Canada Pension Plan that does not help our current seniors, those seniors that we say are the most vulnerable. It's not helping that, them. It's going to be just an additional tax. And for those students who have come out of college and university with these enormous debts, we are going to see another tax on them. And the opportunity for them to save their own money for what they choose is being removed by this government. These are things that I am extremely, extremely uh, concerned with. You know, this government has said, and, and they said many times in their campaign promises, they talked about deficit spending. And I want to talk about the middle class. The middle class that we are talking about today will be that group of people, these, these young families that are currently the middle class that are going to wind up with a huge debt, whether it's the debt from the deficit, whether it's the debt from the new CPP contributions, or whether it's the debt that they're going to have because we're going to be taking this carbon tax money, and are we going to be using it properly? So those are some huge concerns that I have. I am a very much a an environmentally friendly person, but I believe in the stewardship of our land. And I think we need to make sure that we recognize if we're taxing people, is this money actually going to be reducing our, our costs, uh, reducing the uh, climate change, as they're saying, the man-made climate change, or are we going to actually just be taking that money and putting it into general revenues and pet projects? And unfortunately, I see the latter, the pet projects truly being the focus of this climate change plan. So we have this new carbon tax that we've now introduced in the province of Ontario. We're going to see one at the federal level as well. And all we're seeing is average Canadians, the people who are going to have to pay for this huge deficit from the 2016 line of credit or the 2016 budget, we're just going to see huge debts that these guys are going to have to pay. And you know, that is a very large concern for myself. As I said, I'm a parent and myself, I have three children currently in post-secondary education. I recognize the cost of education and I am uh, very fortunate to be able to assist in some of those expenses. Not all families can do that. So what we've done is, once again, we have crippled the middle class by introducing so many different factors in this. Going back to the, uh, the tax-free savings account, this is a vehicle, as we've said, and as this government has said many times, it is, in, it is uh, maximizing the contributions. Now, on this, side of, on this side and with this party, the official opposition, we see that this is an excellent vehicle for people to save money. It gives them the opportunity to put in maximum contributions. But instead, we are rolling that back. And we have uh, different institutions and different organizations from throughout Canada who are saying, we appreciate that increase and we think that's what needs to be done. But instead, we see a government that is planning on taxing Canadians. And tax, 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 spend, spend, spend. And we go through this, and you know, the, the bottom line is we are trying to tax ourselves to prosperity. That is not what we can do. We are taking all of this money from hardworking Canadians, and we are going to be taxing them more and more. So unfortunately, when this Liberal government came in to office after they, they had their great, uh, you know, their, their great campaign, 
all they're doing at the end of the day is they are crippling our middle class. They are crippling our seniors, and they have only short-term plans. And I, I hope that when they look at this, they will recognize that we need to do better, and we can do better. And I hope that they look and review all of the options that they put forward. Thank you. Questions and comments? The Honourable Deputy de Gatineau. The Honourable Member for Gatineau. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and happy Friday. I thank my colleague from across the way for her speech. She's talking to us um, in a way that's mystifying. It's uh, surprising to find a Conservative Party member speak out against a bill that is decreasing the tax burden, that decreases taxes on the middle class, and obviously talking about the TSFAs, um, I don't know how many of my constituents uh, earn middle class salaries are much, I, I think they're much happier to have money in their pockets as we're doing. We have nine million Canadians, many of whom are in Gatineau, who are seeing a tax decrease rather than trying to put uh, $11,000, which they don't have, into a tax-free savings account. So I'm asking her if her constituents don't prefer to have money in their pockets with a middle class tax cut rather than having an opportunity to contribute to a TSFA that they just can't allow themselves to contribute to. Well, I thank the honourable member very much for his question, but the bottom line is you're saying one thing and you're doing another. You're introducing a tax cut for our middle class down to 20.5% and you're increasing uh, carbon tax. You're increasing a variety of other things that we have done. And these are concerns that I do have because it, it's, yes, it looks great on paper until you see all of the other pages talking about all the, all the other taxes that this government is going to do. And whether it's today or whether it's tomorrow, we know that this government is going to be trying to tax us and, and spending, more spending on, you know, the bottom line is you can't spend your way to growth as you can't tax your way to prosperity. And this is exactly what we see this government doing. 